what's up everybody we're live a little bit earlier than usual so it wasn't the half an hour which was posted on the theory crafters uh instagram so we're a little bit earlier but hey ho uh, early than late i suppose but on this topic it's going to be slightly into the whole star wars game again since it's my topic and obviously going to be talking about star wars i have my special tool with me which got the red in the background and this as well, since we're going to be focusing on Palpatine, specifically in Legends and also in Canon. So what do I mean by that? That was just the lightsaber like tying off. So talking about cloning. Cloning exists throughout all different kinds of movies and also quite frequently in Star Wars Canon and in Legends. So the whole debate with cloning uh, force users and so on, which we're going to start on that subject and then get into the whole sort of real life sort of cloning which kind of sort of exists in today's world in a weird way so we're gonna get started on that so without further ado boom 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 let's get ready to rant oh yes <laughs> so the biggest thing with the whole point of cloning within star wars was it was to mass produce an army which by the new trilogy they stopped doing because there was a fault with the process and cloning them if i remember correctly well yes i mean like the whole like cloning thing was to have a very obedient uh class of troopers soldiers basically which um could take orders and could basically that the way they were designed the way they were kind of fiddle fiddled about with is they had these inhibitor chips in their head which they were able to be completely obe obedient, taking any order without question uh, from whoever their masters were. So that was the point of clones. And then as like, time went on, the Empire wanted to use uh, regular people after that, which after then, it just sort of, there was more sort of, I'm not sure if it was maybe a different, like maybe strength, maybe they wanted to, be able to hire more intelligent people who are stormtroopers, which maybe promote them to different roles, such as engineers and stuff like that, which kind of happens as well in that kind of thing. But also with, let's move on to the, like just the basic canon. So with canon, which we had, the whole Rise of Skywalker thing was a massive debacle. I know Ben's not a fan of uh, the sequels <laughs> very much at all. <laughs> No, like the thing is for me, while they were interesting trilogy to a degree, it was just <sighs> it was Disney more cash grabbing than it was trying to add to the story because Star Wars it was a big thing, it was probably the first time any real movie had been anything out of planet Earth to a degree for sci fi in us, like. Most of sci-fi stuff happened around Earth or within the same solar system, but Star Wars came along and just went, yeet! Nope, we're doing this. Yeah. But that's why it's so groundbreaking, because even though it was a trilogy, it was a good saga, because it had plot within each one that wasn't dependent on the others to make it sense. Exactly, yeah. But then you get the prequels and the sequels... Anything walls just ruins it. Unfortunately, it's just the way it is. Yeah, but we're well, obviously we've already done that kind of debate. We've done yes. that debate on Star Wars to death, but we're specifically going to be focusing on uh, Palpatine. So Palpatine's back in the sequels, which I know when I went to the cinema, I didn't completely understand it. I didn't understand it for until relatively recently. And it involves like the novels as well, the novelizations, which explain a lot, which I don't know why they don't just explain it more in the film. Because even though it was uh, Palpatine revealed that Snoke wasn't necessarily a clone. He was more like an experiment in a way. So I don't think Snoke's even a species. But then there was the kind of theory that he was kind of like a failed clone of Palpatine in a way, which was mm. kind of not ready, I suppose. But then in the film when Kylo Ren discovers Palpatine uh, and he's being kept alive for all these tubes and everything through artificial means and he says, I'll, I killed Snoke and I'll kill you too. And he says, I have died before. 
But it's stated in the novelizations that this Palpatine is a clone. But yeah, uh, regardless like, plot-wise, plot-wise, it didn't really make a hell of a lot of sense because it kind of negates the whole prophecy and everything like that, in my opinion. But that's not the subject to this because we'll go on in that forever. Uh, that's in a separate video in itself. But with, but with cloning, especially as the Star Wars universe with Force users... It's repeatedly stated in like in a lot of canon that you can't clone a force user and you have Palpatine, which is stupendously powerful. So with cloning, in a way it kind of goes into that into that sense. If from an original host with that kind of power with the force, dark side or whatever, be able to cope inside of a clone body in a way, it's a very it's an odd question. I mean I I would lo logically think no, given no. the fact that the process of cloning is basically a, sp a sped up version of life to a degree. Like the body had to be sped up to a point where it was at a ripe age to like understand what was going around it. But then the thing is, like the force is like the cumbersome energy force within Star Wars itself. It is life energy itself. So, given the fact that cloning is unnatural, it would probably make it unstable. I'm surprised that it wouldn't become the point where they could... If anything, it would have been a better ending where they tried to fight and they tried to tap into the dark side of the Force too much, causing them to implode or explode because of the mass amount of energy couldn't be sustained in the new body. Well, actually... It's a good job you said that because now it leads me into this kind of quick subject. Whereas there's one of my favorite characters called uh, Star Killer or Galen Merrick uh, mm -hmm. from the Force Awakens. From no, not the Force Awakens. Force Unleashed games one and two, and he starts off. Galen Merrick is the original uh, person who was trained by Darth Vader, which is legends. But it I should it should be in canon because it's a brilliant story. But anyway, this Star Killer, if you choose the original ending. Uh, start the original Galen Merrick dies, but then he from his body, Darth Vader is able to clone many, many, many different Star Killers, and oh, yeah, and he's and he he's able to clone Star Killer. He states that the Star Killer, which is in the Force Unleashed Two game, is a clone, and he says that because he's experiencing all the memories of the original star killer and he's experiencing the same memories feelings and everything towards some people he's remembering like his old life and so on and he asks his master darth vader why is this happening to me and he's and he says that the cloning process is still imperfect all the others went mad within months and either just couldn't cope or they uh took their own lives or whatever because they just couldn't cope they just went nuts so it was kind of there was a flash. I feel it was a flashback where Darth Vader says to him that you're own you're basically a husk filled with the memories of a dead person. So in a way, it's sort of that original person, but it's not the original person at the same time. So it's just basically a new. Comp it's basically like if you made the comparison with, let's just say the iCloud. And, you know, obviously you get a new iPhone, like you get a new iPhone, all your stuff's transferred, like from iCloud onto your new phone, but it's not your original iPhone that you had. So in a way, it's all similar. So cloning is just, it's a very difficult subject to kind of get right. It's in any universe, I think. Yeah, I mean, time and time again, when it comes to cloning, in a lot of like sci-fi ideas is they always can seem to play off the idea that memories are somehow still sustained within the dna which is a really fascinating subject to try and figure out if that was even true in real life because obviously cloning has been a thing that scientists have wanted to do for decades now because Due to the fact that we can't always have organ donors, we can't always sustain enough for what we need to try and keep the rest of us alive, it makes it easier if we were to just 
duplicate the same part of a person that worked if they needed it. But then it comes into the whole ethical issue in terms of how much of that person. Well, like, as there was the clone of Daisy the Sheep, which yes. from years back, which I can't remember exactly how they'd done it. I can't go into the whole technical aspect as it's a, it's a brain fart to understand. But we're so that's it's kind of a possibility in today's world with animals. But when yes. it comes to people, obviously, because like the most intelligent, be, most intelligent beings on earth, but that's debatable in some aspects. I mean, look who the <laughs> yeah. last president was. But <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a that's a um, stream in itself. To be fair, dude, I think <laughs> about a good but, two days worth. <laughs> I have only two. <laughs> so, but, but obviously, like you said, with the um, if you're going to go to like cloning us as a species the most dominant species on earth obviously because we have intelligent like have the like intelligence had the brain capacity emotions so on able to make decisions morally right wrong all that kind of stuff that makes us human but say if we were already say if like somebody was already cloned like a world like let's just say i don't know your average joe and that body naturally dies but they have a clone body pretty much wait like pretty much waiting for them but then again it's all well and good having a clone body but in this kind of into the real world there's no way to kind of upload the memories and everything that makes that person that person to that clone body but in mm. a way if they could it's not the original person it's just the person that's filled with the memories and the emotions of someone who is technically dead Yes, you know, <laughs> but then the other thing as well is obviously you mentioned in the Star Wars um, legends, which should be canon, that a lot of the clones were driven mad because they were conscious of what had already previously happened. Yeah, the Star so... Wars like clones were basically like just clean slates. Like Vader wanted clean slates, but then when they started experiencing the memories of like the past, the original host. They went mental and like either they did themselves in and so on, or they just died. I think maybe from shock or something. Well, this is where I'm quite curious as to what could happen because obviously cloning is going to advance at some point. If it were to be that case that we do naturally inher inherit all of the memories that we had to the point where we die and we get cloned at that point, like, how traumatic would it be to try and, like, figure out what to do? I mean, it'd be easy enough if we could easily just clone from a certain point so it wouldn't be so bad. Maybe, like, a day or so, if it was, like, a chronically ill thing, where it'd be a day or so beforehand, so they had decent-ish memories, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, obviously, the whole concept of, like, cloning for reality is that it's going to be from the moment they are gone because that's the last incarnation of them yeah so, then how do you but then it's just like cloning's all well and good but say if we're able to clone like cloning the brain it d doesn't necessarily mean you're going to clone the memory and everything that makes that person that person though that's the difficult bit well that there is that too because Obviously, the thing is with cloning is that whether they'd want them to be the right age, it means they'd have to speed up their aging. So although they would retain the memories of the person that died, they wouldn't have the morality. I think that's the biggest thing that's going to be very tricky to try and comprehend because morality is always down to life experience. You could have five people in the room that have pretty much been brought up in say the same area same school but completely different parent parental like techniques different ways of being taught what to do and what not to do different attitudes towards people because you pick it up as you grow up yeah so it's one of those things where it could be so easily done that you could clone like i don't know like the most perfect soldier in the army but you could brainwash them into being what you want them to do. Yeah, because imagine if like there was like an original. Imagine if there was 
like an original person who died, like say the best soldier that say the British army had, the best soldier that the like the British army had, and they decided to clone that same guy, but a number of times. So imagine if like the original per the original host is still alive, but there's all these clones which are not you, but they are you, which are running around and basically making one whole army. But then you kind of lose your identity. But then there's the whole morality aspect, which mm -hmm. that would end up developing not just mental issues for probably that person, but for all of the clones, for that matter. Well, yeah, this is it. But then the other thing as well is... I've always wondered, because obviously there is the Clone Wars TV series, the clones are aware they are clones. So how... Like, if it were me, I would be very, very confused as to trying to figure out who would be who, because it's technically another me. Like, ha I know some of them have, like, like, slight marks, like, tattoos, whatever, but... At the end of the day, if it weren't for like those simple little ideas, if it was just literally a clean cut, clean cut clone, how on earth could you differentiate from one another unless there were slight different ways of programming? That's the only way, and that's where you sort of start to dive into the darker side of things of like telling people, telling things because. In a way, clones really aren't people. They're just, like, fabrications of people. Well, they're grown in vats. Yes, but this is it. Like, they're manufactured. They aren't born. Yeah, they're basically, like, in the Star Wars universe, manufactured as if you would a car, in a way. Pretty much. I. This is why I, I wanted to do this chat with you for ages, because we were talking about the idea that, while it is all well and good coming up with cloning... And it's a well-needed science to do because of all the organ donations that we need and the fact that it's very difficult, despite how perfect you could be for a blood type, to actually genetically be the right, per the right part for somebody else. But it's the whole ethical issue because how far is too far in terms of cloning? Well, yeah, I mean, like in today's world, we can almost, almost transplant nearly every organ in the body you can do heart transplants you can do lungs transplants you can do kidney transplants but we haven't done brain transplants but you know that some doctor or some scientist is gonna try it oh god it'll be someone in germany or japan it's i don't know why, why it's is it always, always japan? The way i think it's just the fact that they it seems to be japan is like 10 if not 20 years ahead of everyone else and they just seem so nonchalant about it all. Like they just go, "Oh yeah, we got this, we got that." Like this is our lives. It's like, it's the hell. Yeah, <laughs> like, we'll just like say if like let's like talk about dementia for example, a degenerative brain disorder, brain disease. Sorry. So, say someone needs a brain transplant for what uh, for whatever reason. But here's the thing: like the brain, which like is the most complex organ in the body, and um, which makes up you. If you do a brain transplant, yeah, it might look like that person. But to me, if it was possible, it's not really that person. It's somebody else's brain. Well, this is where I wanted to try and figure out, would it be in terms kind of like when people Frankenstein laptops, where they wipe the hard drive or wipe the brain and then upload the last things that they had stored? Like, it would, it could come to the point where, like, there could be hard drives worth of people's memories. Like... It'd be scary, but this is the possible future we could easily live in in the next 50 or so years, if not sooner, depending on what happens. Yeah, if we have certain tech in our brain, and for some reason or another, we have like we have uh, brains in vats, which, like we were talking the other day, and for anybody watching this, you know, we, we talk a lot about these things a lot of the time before we discuss them. So we, like Ben was talking about the idea of, imagine if we, like, at some point in our lives when, like, transplants, we, like, we've got now the technology for 3D printing, like, people are 3D printing organs and testing out 3D printed hearts and things like that. And, like, this is starting to become a reality and, like, creating 
organs out stem cells from vegetables and so on like these things are happening in our lifetimes right now and people are working on it so we were saying like what if it was so easy like in star wars it like for example it just seems like you lose a limb or you lose a limb oh, it doesn't matter we could just replace it it's fine you know so what if that happens in our future that we're able to if we lose a leg in an accident it should, you can just go to the body shop and go i like that leg i'll have that one you know, <laughs> is that going to be a possibility that if we lose an arm a leg or something like that or an organ we can basically just get one from the shop <laughs> well if I'm sort of more inclined to think that what if it be like someone had like a memory stick of each person, so then it could be like you just literally plug into the machine and it prints out the net the like replacement part. Yeah. So it would literally be a body shop for people instead of cars. Yeah. Because the thing is, as well, is like this is where I really worry for America because America for health system is screwed as it is. I, I feel sorry for you lot in America. Anyone who's watching, I pity you. I really do. It's not fair. You have to pay for the basic needs of health. But if this were to come like down to a possibility in America and they hadn't fixed that issue by then, God almighty, could you imagine someone trying to try and do it on the cheap? <laughs> like, like for yeah, like, like, oh yeah those back alley butt lifts <laughs> yeah, yeah well i know it sounds really stupid but i just got this image of like if someone were to like lose both their legs they could have a deadpool moment they moment they have like baby legs like he oh, doesn't yeah, so, oh, sorry got the wrong ones i forgot they need to grow ah <laughs> oh, damn it i thought you said age five not age 50 <laughs> I was like, sorry, I missed the zero off the end. Yes. <laughs> but this is it. Like, it could easily happen to a degree. And while it does sound very obscure, this is coming from a generation where we literally have pocket computers. The mobile phone was the one invention that tomorrow's world never predicted. Exactly. Everything else. Yeah. But this is it. Like, we live in a world where so much is possible yet we are unfazed by it and yeah, i don't like, weirdly, know like, a side fact, like with the um like with the space shuttles with the space shuttles on the like the like the lander spacecraft like the lander which like landed on the moon like for the first ever moon landing by america from buzz aldrin and so on it like that technology to get them to land on the moon is the same technology which is in this phone right now, which is recording me. Well, and that's I... pretty scary if you think about it. Well, if anything, I think our phones have got more computing power than that did, to be fair. It did, to be honest, because they like, got there with very little tech for the time mm. in the 60s. I mean, I think they've probably been better off using a lot of tinfoil and a lot of coca-cola of mentos but there we go <laughs> yeah like that's plenty of thrust i mean have you seen those things go off on youtube jesus God. but getting back onto that subject like if we had to like transplant our brains you know somebody's gonna try it if we had to transplant our brains is there going to be a point in the future where we may have some kind of technology or chip in our heads or whatever like a usb port where you basically have a blank brain and we're able to like upload the memories and everything from the old person into the new brain, which is basically like it's got it's got nothing on it. It's a blank format, and we are able to upload everything into the new brain. Well, the thing is, this is where it reminds me of an episode from Doctor Who back when it came back in about two thousand five. They went to, I think it was like the year, it was quite far flung into the future. And it basically, humanity had advanced to the point where you could literally download information into your brain by they had these little panels that opened up in the front of your brain and it would send information while, well, Wi Fi basically straight into your brain. And one guy basically had it programmed. So every time he snapped his fingers, it would go, Bzzz! and it was just, oh. But again, this is what could be possible to a degree is like downloading and re-uploading information as quickly as that. But then it also comes into the idea of what if someone to hack into it and put in like subliminal messaging stuff. Because 
subliminal messaging has been quite an interesting thing since the internet came along. Ever since that, everyone's been like, oh, did you hear that secret message? And while I'm sure there is some of it that's a bit piss poor because it's just people grabbing for the idea of grabbing, some stuff, it does make you think, like, hmm, why would they do it if it is there? I, I suppose so. But <clears throat> this is where it just makes me wonder how advanced do we have to be before we have to sort of go, right, we've gone too far. Yeah, because... like how far is too far? I mean... Like uploading somebody, basically putting somebody's brain into someone else's body. It's that same person's body, but I, you can guarantee it won't be the same person. No. But then it's like there... Oh, I can never remember the movie, but there's a movie where Keanu Reeves basically loses his wife, his daughter, and his son in a car crash. He's the only survivor, but because he's a scientist that's been delving into cloning just because, he decides to resurrect them all from basically like cells from their dead bodies, and he tries to live out a normal, happy life. Yeah. But then reality sets in, and their memories start coming back from like them realising that they shouldn't be alive, and then their sanity drops bit by bit. So, like when, so when they're cloned and when they come back, do are they basically like all there, like the same person yeah, yeah. before the accident? Yeah. So it's with the way that he tries to hide it. I don't know if it's via manipulating memories or something. Like it's, it's almost like it's got a blocker on the point of. It's like he's trying to rewrite their memories to forget about the crash and they just basically went through a drive and then came back. But the problem is, is obviously human intuition and curiosity. When you know something doesn't feel right, you start digging and delving into it to try and piece it together, which then starts unraveling their sanity. And I don't know much about the movie. I've only seen clips of it, but I can guarantee it didn't end well. Yeah, for sure. Like when we go, I spoke about this on uh, on my other channel, and um, I spoke about digital immortality. Like scientists even are talking about this, and computer nerds are talking about this. That our brains are getting so complex, and technology is developing so much that you know when you when you're trying to remember something, and you go, "Ah, oh, what was that thing I was trying to remember?" And what if you're able to download that onto a hard drive so you never forget? So you're able to eventually we may get to the point in the future where we're able to upload all of our memories and all of our information in our brains, things and memories that we wish we could remember. We can replay them again on maybe a laptop, for example, like memories that you had maybe when you were like six and oh in perfect God. detail, just like you're watching a video that you recorded on your phone. How freaking creepy would that be? That would be really freaky. I mean, it could easily go a step further where, like you said earlier, with the built-in like memory drive or whatever, you could even, like, they could, I don't know, add in a projection of some sort through your eyes. So you literally see a screen in front of you. You can scroll through it in front of you. It could be even freakier than that. And I think it's going to get to the point where it's just like, why? Like and it's at all what in... point at what point do we stop being human in a way? Well, this is it. I mean You know, it's like I because I've found a very awesome I found a really cool quote from I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Einstein, I can't remember. It was like quite a well known scientist, but said Humans humans managed to make the atomic bomb which kills millions of people and could destroy the earth so many times over. So humans created the atomic bomb, an instrument an instrument of death, be it a mouse would never create a mouse trap. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. We are a very chaotic species to say the least. Yeah, so a mouse would never create a mouse trap, but yet we will create stuff that kills millions. I think the problem is is that we are too self-aware for our own good sometimes. Like we 
although it's good to push the edge of the envelope, there are moments where you just think, no. There's a like thing where, yeah, we can, but should but we? should we? But then the other thing as well is... The thing I've always been quite curious about as well is whether or not the whole concept of designer babies would be a lawful idea because that was a talk that came up on, I think it was Russell Howe's Good News a few oh, years ago. What was that about? Like, you know, because obviously you c in natural births, you can't decide if you want a boy or a girl. It's kind of like mm. the lottery. You get what you get. But then when people want to go into like cell manipulations or gene manipulations, so we get exactly what we get, or scientists are working on like test tube babies in a way that if there's a gene which they have, which may cause them a disease or something in the future or a disability, they're able to switch off that gene. So mm. like there's gene manipulation talks and cell manipulation going on. So if you go, I want a boy, okay, I'll just tamper with this gene. Voila, you get a boy. But this is it. Like it makes you question whether that is the ethical thing to do. Because I mean, no. no. Obviously not, but then it all depends on whether people can make money off it. I think that's the saddest thing of it all. At the end of the day, this is what a lot of the cloning aspect is going to be, is how much they're going to charge, literally, for an arm and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you did there. <laughs> it was rather handy. But <laughs> the thing is, as well, is that while it's been good that there has been a lot of medical things that have advanced, such as uh, prosthetics. That, for example, the past 10 years, the robotics and animatronics for prosthetics has advanced like to no end. Yeah, like the, but... arms, that, the arms that we had in like Star Wars for like Anakin Skywalker, those kind of arms exist. And there's hand, robotic hands now which can feel, which can touch, which can sense heat changes, like temperature mm -hmm. changes, stuff like that. But then it makes you wonder if that's going to happen, if we were to get cloning instead, what would happen to all of those businesses that depend on creating prosthetics? Because I'm sure, given the choice, people would rather an actual fleshy hand than to something that's a bionic one, unless you want to be the Winter Soldier. Like, yeah, but same way if people like are born with a disability and people are born without an arm, they don't know what it's like to use an arm. So what happens if like they get an arm which they've never had? You know, there is that true. I mean, like somebody born without legs, and then somebody gets them some legs and goes, "Okay, now you can walk." Well, how do I walk? Mm. But then but... again, I suppose it comes from like. People that have been paralysed and they're learning to walk again, it might be mm. similar to that. I don't know. But this is it. Like There are so many ethical quandaries with this whole concept. It would be both amazing but scary because there's only a very fine line between what is ethical and what is right. And more often than not, right doesn't actually equal what is ethical if that makes any sense. Exactly. So, yeah, there may be the possibility that you can, but should you? Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to add for today's stream? Uh, I don't think so, but this has been a very fun chat, and I hopefully it may get you guys to maybe think morally about this and kind of consider this as I'm not sure whether cloning or anything like that's going to be possible in mine and Burns' lifetime, but it might be in our children later on, grandkids possibly, but it kind of gets to that point. And then just like uh, Ian Malcolm said in Jurassic Park, that depends on if, yeah, there was all the possibility that you could, but you should stop to ask yourselves whether or not you should. <laughs> but what do you guys think? As always, tell us down below in the comments or send us a message on Instagram. Whatever you like, as we would like to hear your input and input for other topics that we can do in the future. So next week's going to be Ben's topic, which, what would that be? Well, I want to delve into 80s cringy horror slash sci-fi movies, because some were brilliant, some were terrible. 
And the first one on my list is Gremlins. Only because, as of next year, if not the year after, apparently Gremlins 3 is coming to cinemas. And how, how long has it been? Uh, <sighs> probably ooh, at least a good few decades worth. So it's just going to be one of those things where I want to just nerd out on the most cringy horror sci-fi series today. It's a great movie if you just have nothing better to watch, but I am damn sure it was the inspiration to Furby because they were both annoying, cute, and don't shut the hell up. Yeah, kind of like a Tamagotchi as well. If you don't feed your electronic pet, shut up! <laughs> Oh, yes. But there we go, folks. Thanks for joining us. We are two dudes joined by a furry little guy in the back of Jack's forecat, well, background, called Boris. And again, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Ladies, y'all. <laughs>